So probably one of the most slept on features that exists in many DAWs today, um, including Logic Pro and Ableton. I can't speak for Fruity Loops because I don't really use it, so I'm not sure. Um, but in my opinion is the skip back recording. I use skip back for a lot of reasons, but primarily for the reason of uh, solos. So here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna put some chords together. First, I'm gonna grab a drum riff here and we'll use We'll use this one. I'm just trying to find something that, that kind of inspires me, if that makes sense to you. Uh, let's drop this down to, what was that, 92? You don't have to use 92, you could actually change this, but for the sake of keeping this pretty simple, I'm just gonna do 92 and then, oops. And I'm gonna join them. All right, cool. So we have a riff, we'll loop it out. Now let's say initially I'm just trying to get some chords. So let's pick some, some chords uh, in Scalar. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make it as quick as possible. This video is going to be short for real, for real. All right, let's use this, it's fine. And record. Let's make sure we turn on the metronome. I really don't need the metronome because we have this going, but I'll do it anyway. All right, so here we go, we got some chords. But now let's say, this is just great. I'm gonna turn this metronome off, by the way. Uh, I want to start doing some type of lead, so, but I'm unsure what I'm going to do, because obviously I am unsure. Um, let's just drop in Ample Sounds uh, guitar right here. All right, so now I want to start playing lead. I'll usually learn the key first, by the way, if I, if I don't know what key I'm playing in. So in this case, it's E Lydian mode. Let's go ahead and adjust this to E Lydian and um, you want to change it you want to change it on everything really so I'll just do this E Lydian okay so now that we're in that we're gonna go ahead and do um, just some playing around so here's the thing it's recording in the background already but and I'm gonna make this a little bit longer you don't have to, but I am at least, you know what, give me 16. I like that when I, especially when it comes to solos, just cause I want to have as much space free as I can. Cause I'm not recording in the solo. I don't need all this space, but this is just how I work, right? Um, the first few times around, I'm just pressing something to come up with it. But again, learning the scale is key. So you need to know what notes. And here's the notes that I'm for all the blue notes, right? So it's all the black keys. And then the E and the B. All right. So there you go. So now to play that, we're going to play it down here. Let's just press play and we'll just start playing around.
let's say I like some of the stuff I have. Boom, click it. Now if you drag that, you'll see all the notes. Now it plays it up here too, so I'm gonna delete that. But you see here? Now the same thing is true when you go into Logic. So I just kind of freestyled that. I don't. I was just staying within the key. And if you wonder if I went out of key, you can look in here. We set this to the key, right? E Lydian, E Lydian. And you can see I'm in the key. Now, if you weren't in the key and you played, then all you have to do is hit fit to scale. And this is in Ableton. Other ones, I'm not sure how they work with regards to that, but that's something you can look into and dive deeper. This is just to show you the power of skip back, or I'm gonna call it not skip back, I'm sorry. MIDI capture rather is what it's called. MIDI capture is huge. Now skip back as what we use in the SP to capture the audio, but um. And why do I like it so much? Because it captures the feel and the essence of what you're playing in that moment versus me pressing record and trying to make it happen. This is the better way, in my opinion. And, yeah, you know, there's musicians. I think I've heard this about Timberland. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that he records everything, that he'll just leave the recording going and just record. Because if something happens, and he likes that, he can go back and get that. Versus if he doesn't have a recording, then, you know, you could miss a moment of um, what you're doing. Now, how much capture does it do in Ableton? I can't say I know. And Logic, I can't say I know. Um, but I will say this, for most of the stuff that I do, 16, 24, 32 bars, 64 bars, it's capturing most of it. I don't have too many issues with with that. But it's cool because let's say you stopped here and you got this, but you like every bit of it. Then you can pick up and finish out this end here if you want. Or you could just start over here and start doing something else and come back. But that MIDI capture is huge. I'm not set to this 16 bars. This is just what the loop is playing. I could actually put this on four and keep playing and then have... And if I did that, I would just move it over, adjust it to wherever it needs to be. But if you set yourself up with 32 bars, you're going to find something within there that you like. The cool thing is, and this works in Ableton. I don't know if this works in all DAWs, but let's say you like a part that you played. I'm just going to pick a part. Let's say this part here. If you hit Option, and grab, you can move the MIDI and add it over here. Right? And then look, you have the rest of it if you want to do that. So you have, you can move parts around after you play it, right? But just have fun and play. The DAW is not rid, um, restrictive and it really is not like it. it used to be a lot worse oh my goodness when you get in there you pretty much had to press play had to have everything kind of in its spot now you can just kind of play and go back even the same thing applies to chords so i mean you could you could be playing chords here i'm gonna do this uh now it does not work as far as i know and it may somebody may know this i, I don't think i do though that it, I don't think it works with scalar on a separate track. But let's say you didn't have scalar and don't have these chords going here. And let's mute this. Let's just say you have the beat going. terrible but whatever click it and now you have whatever hot mess I just played um, right here so if you like the part of it you could borrow it I say borrow it you played it you could just take that part 
and move it to wherever you want. So that's the essence of MIDI capture. Um, I love MIDI capture. It's super helpful for leads. I use it for bass a lot of times. If I'm uncertain on something I wanna play, but I wanna mess around, kind of practice just with it. Boom, and do that, and there it is. Not even press and record. Now, you do have to arm the track because it doesn't know where you're playing at, but that's, if you're just listening to any sound, you're gonna have to arm the track. Okay, so arm the track, and this probably does not fit with these chords up here. So I'd put the chords back in if you're gonna play with that. And just hit play. Like that, that's cool. There you go. I'm gonna add a note in. How did I know what to play? Oops, undo that. How did I know what to play? Well, in the previous video, if you watched, I know it was kind of long and I didn't put markers. Apologies, but if somebody wants to help me, they can throw markers in for me. Um, I just use the scale, right? This is why I say learn the scale, learn the BPM of a song that you like so that you can... And then you get away from that, right? Drop that because that's going to hinder you if you stick too closely to notes like that. Just play and listen and feel. If you make a mistake, that's great because it's probably going to sound good. It's it's a mistake, but we as humans, we, we actually enjoy a lot of mistakes that happen. There's songs, plenty of songs on the radio right now that were mistakes. So don't get caught up in worrying about that. Just play. And don't be so particular about, oh, this note's not right on that one. That's fine. It probably sounds better not on the one. Let it be a little off. That's the human element of playing music. And in a DAW, you can become very rigid if you use MIDI that way, where you're drawing in your notes so perfectly on to where it sounds bland and basic and like you didn't even play it. Well, of course you didn't if you drew it in, but um, let me uh, mute this phone real quick. So there you go. That's how you get it. Start with a drum loop if you struggle with drums. Like me, I'm not a drummer, so a lot of times the drums will have to come second. So start with a drum loop. Start building the other parts over the drum loop. And then use your skip back. I'm, I keep saying skip back because I'm SP talk. Um, use your MIDI capture in your DAW. And this is also on iOS Logic Pro if you use it. They have MIDI capture. Use that to capture your playing and just play, learn the scale and play within the scale. Okay, we'll talk about some other stuff. Um, I find that when you people say they struggle with bass lines, it's because they're trying to do this. They're trying to follow the exact pattern here and place these notes on the exact line. Don't do that. Your song's gonna sound like that and you're gonna continue to say, I struggle with bass lines. Just play, practice and play. And you'll eventually get to where you just, it comes natural for you. Even with your melodies, if you don't want a stiff melody, 
It sounds so bland and basic. Just play, right? Use that MIDI capture to help you capture your good moments in your playing. And there's going to be a lot of good moments. Even the bad moment can sound good if it's, if it's, uh, if it sounds like it fits. So don't get rigid with your music. That's a crucial step to um, not being com becoming so um, bland and plain in your sound. All right, hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the uh, comment section below. I'm out.